Last year, in 2023, we've discussed the Euclid Telescope, a really exciting project by the European Space Agency that was launched on a six-year mission in order to study the universe with the most precise and most stable configuration ever launched on any space telescope, able to provide ridiculously sharp images, discovering objects really far away. But its main objective has always been the same. It's trying to answer questions about the dark matter and the dark energy by basically accurately measuring the accelerating expansion of the universe and the minute lensing effects around various galaxies. And well, in about six years, we might have some of these answers, but because the mission has just begun, we actually have not heard much up until now. And well, just a few days ago, in mid-October of 2024, ESA finally released its first data. And not just the first images, but actually an enormous image containing approximately 100 million various objects, but in a tiny region of space you see right there. And that's because this incredible 600 megapixel camera is actually able to record visible light and near-infrared light with ridiculous accuracy. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton, let's briefly talk about this mission, the problems it faced so far, and what's happening now, and of course talk about where all of this is headed and why it's important. But I guess first, a quick reminder about the mission. So this is actually the third telescope in the L2 Lagrange point, 1.5 million kilometers away from planet Earth. A stable gravitational point where we also find Gaia and of course the giant James Webb Space Telescope. And so now they have a neighbor, Euclid, that joins the observation of the universe. But unlike Gaia and James Webb, here we have a wide angle camera that's essentially trying to scan an extremely large piece of the night sky that's eventually going to cover approximately one third of everything. It's going to observe 15,000 square degrees or roughly around a third of the night skies, mostly focusing on extragalactic space. Here's roughly what all of this will look like. But more importantly, because it's actually observing nearby and far away objects, one of its primary missions is to also create an incredibly accurate three-dimensional map of all of this, helping us reveal incredible knowledge about the universe and possibly answering some questions about dark matter and dark energy. And here it's mostly going to be doing this by observing and comparing redshifts of galaxies with their shape and with gravitational lensing effects. You can actually learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, but in essence, by linking galactic shapes with the redshift of individual galaxies, it will help scientists determine the overall distribution of dark energy and how it contributes to the acceleration of the entire universe. And specifically, it's trying to find a relationship between shapes, redshift, and distance. But despite these big goals, initially there were actually a lot of problems, and there's even been concern that maybe the mission is going to fail. And that's because during the first few days, there was a major problem with the guidance system. Here's actually a, one of the images released early on of the unusual trail containing loopy stars because the guidance sensor kept losing its guiding stars and could not focus for more than a few minutes. In other words, the telescope was not stable. And this was one of the most important parts of the mission because by not being able to focus on a certain region of the sky, it would be impossible to produce the required map. But eventually, this was a result with a software patch and almost right away, it started to produce new data. Here are actually some of the first images released by the telescope. The famous Horsehead Nebula, the incredible Perseus cluster of galaxies, a distant galaxy known as NGC 6744, and a star-forming region Massia 78. All images looked incredible, extremely sharp, and contained detail we've never seen before. But a few weeks later, something else started to happen. The mission team realized that there was actually a little bit of water ice forming on the mirrors because of leftover moisture and obviously extreme cold of outer space. And at first they weren't sure how to solve this because if they were to heat up all of the instruments in order to evaporate this water, it might actually deform some of the mirrors or even other instruments inside the telescope, reducing accuracy. And so instead they focused on heating up individual parts one by one, hoping that eventually all of the water evaporates. And it looks like it worked because in the last few months, they haven't discovered any new issues or any more freezing. And so back in March and April of 2024, it officially began observing the night skies, basically focusing on individual locations for 75 minutes and moving on to new location afterwards. And it's going to be doing this approximately 40,000 times. 
in essence taking one image after another, trying to collect as much data as possible from every single point, which will eventually result in a three-dimensional map of everything. But baby steps. And we have our first baby step, released in October of 2024, a tiny piece of a mosaic containing approximately 100 million sources of light and potentially millions of galaxies hiding inside. Here's roughly what this looks like if you were to somehow zoom in on this tiny patch and if you wanted to visualize each of these spots somewhere out there. And that basically highlights how absolutely ridiculous this telescope is. It's super accurate, super precise, with images containing way more accuracy and obviously way more pixels than anything ever before. But obviously, unlike the James Webb, here we only see optical light, just the light perceived with our own eyes. It's actually able to perceive a little bit of infrared, but it's not as powerful as the James Webb. Nevertheless, just look at how much we can see in this tiny, tiny spot. Even the galaxies that are 400 million light years away from us appear as if they're right next to us. We can easily see their shape, we can easily see every feature, and even detect individual parts such as galactic arms. But this is just 1% of the entire mission, and we have 99% to go before the telescope finishes mapping everything and before we get our three-dimensional map. And these early observations are only based on 260 individual images, with each image taking 75 minutes to produce and all of the images taken between March and April of 2024. But even here, this is already approximately 500 times larger than the full moon. And so in that patch of night skies, we have 100 million individual objects of light. Most of them are stars, but quite a lot of them are galaxies. And quite a lot of them are very likely going to be hiding new mysteries. And since the next release is going to be in 2025, or in approximately 5 months, it's quite likely that in the next few months, we're going to be seeing a lot of different papers that basically discovered something really unusual somewhere inside of this little piece of the mosaic. Because even here, there are very likely things hiding that are going to help us find something really bizarre. And one thing that's kind of unusual in a lot of these images is the fact that we even see these unusual clouds. Somewhat dim clouds visible between stars in our own galaxy that appear in light blue. And that's essentially a mixture of gas and dust that sometimes scientists refer to as galactic cirrus. Mostly because they actually resemble cirrus clouds that we usually find in the Earth's atmosphere. And so here Euclid is able to easily see these clouds simply because it's using a visible light camera and also because these clouds generally reflect optical light from the Milky Way galaxy. And so in this image you can generally see the density and the overall size of these clouds that are basically all over the Milky Way galaxy. But normally, in a typical telescope, you're just not going to see anything here. It's really the super sensitive Euclid that's able to see them so well. These clouds usually emit a lot of far infrared light and initially we learn about them by discovering them in some of the first infrared telescopes that were operating around planet Earth. Here's for example one of the first images produced by the NASA's IRIS telescope, in this case focusing on the famous Orion. And as you can see in the infrared light, they become easily visible. But for Euclid, it's actually really intriguing that it's also able to see them in the optical light as well, not just the infrared. Which of course means that it's probably going to lead to some new discoveries in regards to our own galaxy as well. But at least for now, we don't really have any actual discoveries, we just have super cool images. And a video that you can find in the description below, released by the European Space Agency. And so as Euclid produces new images and releases more data, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.